Now, tensions have risen in the Libyan capital, Tripoli, after armed groups mobilized in uh, several districts ahead of next week's presidential election. Armed men surrounded the Prime Minister's office for several hours uh, following the dismissal of a military commander. Uh, there is still uncertainty over whether the presidential vote due on the 24th of December will actually take place. The election is a key element of a UN-backed uh, plan to try to bring political stability to Libya after a decade of unrest. Well, let's bring in Jamal Benomar, chair of the International Center for Dialogues, uh, Dialogue Initiatives. That's an independent think tank that covers the uh, Middle East and North Africa. He joins us uh, from New York. Thanks for taking time to talk to us on the program. Uh, what are the chances that uh, Libya will actually hold this election given the kind of instability we are seeing so far? The chances are very thin indeed. Um, this process has been marred with uh, a lot of problems. Um, first, you know, there has been a push from the international community for these elections to take place and we've seen similar efforts by the international community in 2012 and 2014 but elections held at that time only led to renewed violent conflict. Um, the conditions are not really ripe, you know, for free and fair elections to take place. First, you know, there is no agreed upon legal framework, constitutional framework. Um, the Libyans set up a constitution drafting commission, finished its work in 2017, but no referendum has been held, so there is no official constitution, you know, in, in the country. And then the second thing is that um, uh, these are elections that are supposed to take place in a country with no real state. Um, that's the big problem, you know, in, in Libya, no state institutions that are functioning. And um, in addition to this, you know, there is the security problem. Um, you know, there is no one recognized unified army or security force. Now, let, me, um, let me step in here because that's one of the issues I wanted to raise with you. Can you paint us a picture of how divi divisive the issues are and how the country, how much the country is divided going forward? Absolutely. The country has fragmented, unfortunately. Um, you know, since uh, 2011, um, you know, different parts of the country have been now controlled by different um, uh, factions. Um, and um, uh, all efforts uh, today, you know, haven't, you know, produced, you know, um, um, uh, an end, you know, to these violent conflicts. Um, the country is dominated by militias, uh, whether it's in the East or the West. Uh, or other parts of, of the country, there, there are no states, uh, institutions um, uh, functioning. And that makes it very difficult, you know, for elections to take place. Elections, by its, their nature, you know, they unleash political competition. But political competition need to be managed, you know, by uh, states, institutions. And that's what is exactly like in uh, in Libya. So, what is, so the, what, elections, what is the feeling then on the ground among Libyans uh, and what do they make of this poll? I think Libyans want elections. Uh, Libyans are fed up, you know, with the 100 and so politicians who dominated the political process since 2011. Um, Egypt, Egypt, uh, Libyans want legitimate government. Um, and legitimacy can only come really through the ballot box. So they're longing for election, they're longing for stability also, um, because the country has been now dominated by insecurity, you know, mm -hmm. the uh, different armed groups dominating in, and controlling different parts of the country. You know, Libyans are fed up with this, they want to move forward. But the problem is, you know, for elections to take place, um, you know, certain conditions you know, will have to be there. Um, you know, they need, to be some legal constitutional framework agreed upon, um, impartial institution that can manage the competition over elections and and the claims and the counterclaims that may um, uh, that, that may evolve. Um, but you know, in a nutshell, you know, among the politicians, yes, you know, they most want elections, but elections that are conducting conducted in a way that they can guarantee their own. Uh, election. Let, let, getting... Yes, yes. Let me step in here because uh, what then would happen ultimately, um, and what is at stake for Libya and the world, indeed, if these elections do not take place? 
Well, I'm afraid, you know, Libya is doomed, you know, whether it, if elections go ahead, you know, it could be a, a trigger for more violent conflict. If elections do not take place, you know, it could be a trigger also for more of a volatile uh, situation in, in, this, in this region. You know, we know for sure that instability in Libya has destabilized the whole Sahel region. It could destabilize also the Maghreb region uh, with implications on southern Europe. So the stakes are, are really very high, but I'm afraid the international community didn't manage very wisely you know, the situation in uh, in Libya. It monopolized, it led the political process instead of a political process being led by Libyans themselves, freely oh. determining their future. This hasn't happened. Um, yeah. And the, there has been imposition after imposition. And the latest is, you know, this big push for elections to take place at any cost. Elections right. taking place in condition like this can only lead to more complications. All right, uh, very interesting thoughts from you, uh, Jamal Benoma, chair of the International Center for Dialogue Initiatives. That's an independent think tank that covers the Middle East and North Africa. Thanks for taking time to talk to us on Focus on Africa. Thank you.